What up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, you are going to learn about common internet service types such as fiber optics, cable, digital subscriber line, and the wireless options like radio frequency, satellite, and cellular. And you're going to learn how they work, their benefits and drawbacks, and where they are best used. All right, first, let's discuss fiber optic internet, which is one of the fastest and most advanced internet service types available today. So how does it work? Fiber optic internet transmits data as pulses of light through thin strands of glass or plastic, which are called fiber optic cables. And these light signals travel at extremely high speeds, which allows for fast data transfer over long distances without signal loss. And here are some of the benefits of fiber optics. You got speed and bandwidth. So fiber optic internet is capable of extremely high speeds, sometimes up to one gigabit per second or more, which is significantly faster than most other types of internet. And the high bandwidth also supports many users simultaneously without performance issues. Another benefit is reliability. So fiber optic connections are less prone to interference and signal degradation over distance compared to other internet types, making it more reliable for consistent high speed connectivity. And another benefit it offers is low latency latency. So because data travels as light, latency is much lower compared to other types of internet, making it great for online gaming, video streaming, and voice over IP services. So one of the drawbacks is the cost and availability. So the main downside is the cost. Laying fiber optic cables is expensive and complex, which limits availability. And fiber optic internet is typically available in urban areas, but can be hard to find in rural regions. And finally, fiber optic is best for heavy internet users who need high speeds and reliability, such as gamers, streamers, or remote workers who use bandwidth intensive applications like video conferencing. Conferencing. Next, let's talk about cable internet, which is one of the most common types available today. So how does it work? Cable internet uses the same coaxial cables that deliver cable TV service to provide internet connectivity. And these cables consist of a central wire surrounded by shielding, which transmits data at relatively high speeds. And the cable modem connects to these coaxial lines to deliver internet access to homes and businesses. And here are some of the benefits. The first one is speed. So cable internet is quite fast and offers speeds up to several hundred megabits per second. While it's not as fast as fiber optic, it is significantly quicker than DSL or older connections like dial-up. Another benefit is it is widely available. So since cable TV infrastructure is widely available, cable internet can be found in many urban and suburban areas, and it offers good bandwidth for streaming and downloading. So cable internet is a popular choice for streaming video, gaming, and downloading large files due to its relatively high speed. So here are some of the drawbacks. It has shared bandwidth. So one limitation of cable internet is that it is shared among multiple users in a neighborhood. This means that during peak hours, like evenings when everyone is streaming or online, the speeds can slow down. And another drawback is latency. So latency, which is the delay in data transmission, is typically higher than fiber, but lower than DSL. And the best use case is cable internet is suitable for average households with moderate to heavy internet usage, including streaming videos, playing online games, and working from home. All right, now let's dive into DSL internet or digital subscriber line internet. So how does it work? DSL internet uses existing telephone lines to deliver internet service. Unlike dial up, which takes over the entire phone line, DSL uses a higher frequency band that allows for internet and phone service simultaneously. And a DSL modem is needed to decode the signals coming through the phone line. So let's talk about the benefits. And the first one is availability. So DSL is available in most places where there's a phone line, making it widely accessible, even in some rural areas. It also has a dedicated connection. So unlike cable, which shares bandwidth with neighbors, DSL provides a dedicated connection. This means that your speeds will generally remain consistent regardless of the time of day. So what are some of the drawbacks? Well, one is it offers slower speeds. So DSL is generally slower than both fiber optic and cable internet, typically ranging from 
from a few megabits per second to around 100 megabits per second for higher end DSL services. And another drawback is distance sensitivity. So DSL speed and quality depend on the distance from the provider's central office. So basically the further you are, the weaker and slower the signal will become. And what are the best use cases? So DSL is best suited for users with lighter internet needs, such as web browsing, checking email, and basic streaming, especially in areas where faster options like cable or fiber are not available. All right, now let's turn to wireless internet options, which include radio frequency, satellite, and cellular. And wireless internet doesn't rely on physical cables to connect users to the internet. So let's talk about radio frequency internet. So RF internet uses radio signals to transmit data between a local service provider's antenna and a receiver installed at the customer's location. And these signals travel over the air. And so what are the benefits? First one is rural access. So RF internet is especially useful in rural or remote areas where physical cables for DSL or cable are not available. And it offers quick deployment because no cables need to be laid, wireless RF internet can be set up faster than wired services. And some of the drawbacks include line of sight requirements. So the RF signal often requires a clear line of sight between the receiver and the transmitter tower, meaning that trees, buildings, or other obstructions can disrupt the signal. And also it is sensitive to weather. So signal quality can be affected by weather conditions like rain or storms. And the best use case for RF is for rural users who do not have access to fiber cable or DSL connections. Next, let's talk about satellite internet. So satellite internet uses geostationary satellites to beam data from an orbiting satellite down to a dish installed at a customer's location. And the main benefit is it offers global coverage. So since it relies on satellites in orbit, satellite internet can reach remote or rural areas that other service types cannot. And some of the drawbacks include high latency. So because the signal has to travel from the satellite in space to Earth, there is a noticeable delay or high latency in data transmission. And this can make activities like online gaming or voice over IP calls less smooth. And satellite internet is impacted by the weather. So satellite internet is susceptible to weather conditions like heavy rain or storms, which can interfere with the signal. And the best use case is typically used as a last resort option for users in extremely remote areas where no other form of internet is available. All right, next let's talk about cellular internet connections. So cellular internet uses cell towers to provide internet access via mobile networks. The user's device, such as a smartphone, a mobile hotspot, or four or 5G modem connects to the nearest cell tower for internet access. And the benefits it offers is mobility and convenience. So cellular internet is highly mobile and available wherever there is a cellular signal. This makes it perfect for users who need internet access on the go. And and another benefit is it offers increasing speed. So with advancements from 3G to 4G and now to 5G, cellular internet speeds have greatly improved. And 5G in particular offers speeds comparable to fiber optic in some cases. Now, some of the drawbacks it can offer limited data plans. So many cellular plans have data caps or limited high speed data, making it less suitable for heavy users who consume large amounts of bandwidth. And it can have some coverage gaps. So while cellular coverage is widespread, there can still be gaps in service, particularly in rural or remote areas. And the best use case is for users who need mobile connectivity, such as those who travel frequently or live in areas where fixed line services are unavailable. So to summarize, each type of internet service has its unique advantages and drawbacks. So fiber optic, it's ultra fast and reliable, but limited by cost and availability. Cable, it's widely available with good speeds, but bandwidth can be shared among neighbors. DSL, it's reliable in terms of dedicated connections, but slower and affected by distance. RF wireless is good for rural areas, but requires a clear line of sight. Satellite internet can offer a global reach, but it is susceptible to high latency and weather. And then we have cellular internet is good for mobility, and it offers improving speeds, but it may have data caps and coverage limitations. Now, understanding these differences helps you select the best internet service for different scenarios. And this is key for the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. 
All right. So with all that being said, let's do this check on learning. So which of the following Internet service types typically offers the highest potential download speeds and low latency, making it suitable for activities like HD video streaming and online gaming? Would it be cable? Would it be DSL, satellite or fiber optic? And the correct answer would be fiber optic internet. So fiber optic internet uses light signals transmitted through glass fibers, providing extremely high download and upload speeds with low latency. This makes it ideal for demanding applications such as HD video streaming and online gaming. Cable and DSL are slower and satellites generally have higher latency. Next question, which internet type is commonly shared among users in a neighborhood potentially causing speed variations during peak usage times? Would it be wireless cellular? Would it be fiber optic? Would it be cable or would it be DSL? And the correct answer is cable internet. So cable internet operates over coaxial cables and is often shared among users within a local neighborhood. Because of this shared nature, speeds can vary depending on the time of day and the number of active users. DSL connections are generally more consistent as they are dedicated lines or fiber optic and cellular connections are not typically subject to the same level of shared bandwidth issues. And the final question is, what is a major drawback of satellite internet compared to other common internet service types? Is it low availability in rural areas? Is it extremely low latency? Is it high susceptibility to weather conditions? Or is it limited data plans for wireless connections? And the correct answer is high susceptibility to weather conditions. So satellite internet is often used in rural areas where other types of connections are unavailable. However, it is highly susceptible to weather conditions, which can interrupt service. It also has higher latency compared to cable, DSL and fiber optic, making it less suitable for activities that require real time data transmission, like online gaming or video calls. And the limited data plans for wireless connections apply more to cellular internet.